Hello and welcome to Unit 1 of Week 5. This unit will focus on project cost accounting. One aspect of this is how the project types such as overhead cost project, customer projects or direct cost project impact postings in financials. Another aspect of this unit is to explain the valuation of planned and actual project data in finance. And last but not least, we will have a look at some of the project reports. I would like to start with the impact of the project type on finance. Customer projects are, as the name says, customer facing and they are always linked to a sales order. We learned about this in week two. This integrates the projects to the normal order to cash scenario and enables standard functionality such as automatic revenue recognition, which will be covered in the next unit, and profit analysis reporting. Revenues of customer projects are posted as sales revenues and costs of goods sold, as you can see on the right side of this slide. Direct cost projects are mainly intended for internal purposes. This means non-customer facing activities. A good example for a direct cost project would be a research and development project. And the costs that incur on a direct cost project remain on the project. As direct cost projects can be assigned to market segments, the costs are available in the profit and loss reporting as well. We see this in the demo and you see it here on the right hand side um, as well. So in the profit analysis by contribution margin, the costs show up as other expenses. As mentioned above, usually direct cost projects do not generate revenues but it is possible to post manual customer invoices to direct cost projects. For example, if a certain cost of a research and development project can be charged to a client or grantor. These revenues are posted as other revenues. Overhead cost projects are only for internal purposes. An important difference to direct cost projects is, from a financial point of view, that revenues cannot be posted at all and that all costs that incur on an overhead cost project are automatically settled to the requesting cost center. So the balance of overhead cost projects is always zero. The main purpose of overhead cost projects is to have an object that helps to keep track of certain activities within a cost center. For example, you have a marketing department and they want to track costs for a certain marketing campaign or a marketing event. As the requesting cost center can be assigned to market segments, the costs posted to an overhead cost center um, are also indirectly via the receiving cost center available in profit analysis reporting. The costs are posted as overhead costs. And finally, we have the multi-customer projects. Postings on multi-customer projects are sales revenues and costs of goods sold. Let's have a look at the financial value flow in business by design with regards to projects. Some of this has been already covered in week one by Ottfried. You see here that all project types can receive costs via service allocations. This means a cost center is credited and a project is debited. Also, all project types can consume stock materials and carry material costs. It is also possible to post supplier invoices, expense reports or journal entry vouchers to all project types. With regard to overhead distributions and overhead absorptions, there are some differences between the project types. Ottfried will explain these differences in Unit 3 and 4. Plant quantities in projects, this can be plant work, Plant materials or plant expenses are sent to financials to be evaluated and to come up with a project cost estimate. For this valuation of the quantities, the system uses predefined valuation strategies with a given priority sequence. The same is valid for actual confirmations to projects. Here we see the valuation strategies for internal services. On the left hand side, for planned work and on the right side for actual time confirmations of an internal employee. 
The valuation strategy is the same, in this case for plant and actual. In both cases, the system first looks for the cost rate of the labor resource. The labor resource says who is doing something. Labor resources can be defined in business by design for the combination of cost centers and job. Each internal employee is assigned to a job in HR and belongs to a cost center. So each employee has exactly one labor resource. Usually, you would group several people together into one labor resource. If no cost rate is maintained for the labor resource, or even if in an early planning stage of the project, no labor resource has been assigned yet to a certain work package, then the system uses the cost rate of the service. The service describes what is done. The valuation strategy for external employees, so-called third-party service providers, differs between plan and actual. For planned values, the system checks if there is a fixed source of supply. If this can't be found, then the system looks for an existing purchasing contract. If this is also not found, it checks for a price on the purchase price list. And finally, it takes the price of the service. When it comes to the valuation of actual third-party service confirmations to projects, then the system initially takes the price from the purchase order as long as the goods and service receipts exists alone. After a supplier invoice has been posted and the GRIR clearing run was executed, it takes the price from the supplier invoice. Now let's have a look at the valuation strategies for externally sourced materials. On the left hand side you see again the valuation strategies for materials planned on projects. First, the system looks if there is a purchase order associated with the project. If not, the system looks for the most recent purchase order that is not associated with the project. If this is also not found, the system checks if there is a fixed source of supply and if it can't find any, then it looks for an existing purchasing contract. If it can't find any of the prices above, then it takes the price from the purchasing price list. When it comes to the actual costs for externally sourced material, then the system initially takes the price from the purchase order, as long as only the goods and service receipt exists. After a supplier invoice has been posted and the GRIR clearing run was executed, it takes the price from the supplier invoice. This slide shows the valuation strategies for stock materials, so-called inventory. Again, on the left-hand side, you see the valuation strategies for stock materials planned on projects. First, we try to get the inventory cost of the business residence maintained in the project. If there is no business residence maintained in the project, we start to determine the business residence of the responsible cost center of the project and then going up the organizational hierarchy. If this is also not found, then we take the average inventory cost maintained in all business residences of the company. The actual costs for stock materials consumed on a project are the inventory cost maintained for the business residence from where the material is consumed. Expenses are very easy. Expenses planned in projects are directly taken over from the project. The same is valid for actual expense reports or supplier invoices. In both cases, the costs are directly taken over from projects into finance. We are leaving valuation strategies behind and now look into profit center accounting and how profit centers can be used together with projects. One use case to do so would be to establish a matrix organization for your organization, which with costs being in the responsibility of projects and also profit centers. Therefore, you would assign responsible units 
to project tasks, from which profit centers are derived. All costs and revenues posted to a project are also posted to the profit center. Therefore, it is possible to track the costs for the project and also create income statements for all of the involved profit centers. Which you can see here on the right, you have one project but multiple profit centers involved. And then you could see the costs and revenues associated with the project, not only on the project, but also in some kind of a matrix organization on the profit centers. With this, I would like to come to the demo. The first I would like to show you, we talked about a lot about valuation strategies, where you can see what kind of valuation strategy was taken to evaluate the plant quantities on the project. And for this, we go to the work center cost and revenues. I go to the project CPS06. I have defined here a view because we have many projects in there. And then you can go in here and say you want to view the plan values. This one here is now the financial representation of the project. As I said, finance and projects are very tightly connected for plan values as well as actual values. Here we see now the plan values, how they are evaluated. So you see the project with the project structure. Overall, we have planned costs of 39,000 and planned revenues of 95,000. If I want to understand the planning better, I can go in here. The first thing is I see the plan value on that task. I see there was no error, so the whole um, valuation went smoothly. If I want to understand this number better, I can go down to the details and see what was planned here. And if you remember from week two, on the preparation um, task in the project, we planned multiple people. It was Charlie West, an external service consultant, John Thompson, an employee, but from an affiliated or associated um, company, and two internal employees, Tonya Gardner and Peter Sellers. For Tonya Gardner and Peter Sellers, as internal employees, the system tries to find a cost rate for a labor resource. And we see that is the labor resource to which Tonya belongs, and this is the labor resource to which Peter belongs. These labor resources have a cost rate, which you can see here. So the system takes the planned work, which has been entered or maintained in the project, and multiplies it with the cost rate to come up with planned cost. For the two other resources, John Thompson and Charlie West, it's a little different because they are from other companies. One time from an associated company and one time externally. So we see this here, from which suppliers they come. And what you see now, the valuation method is differently. Here for the internals, it took it from the labor resource cost rate. Now it takes the purchase contract price. So that was the first information it could found, the purchase contract price. In the contract, we, there is a cost rate, so it was agreed on that we buy John Thompson for 70 US dollar per hour. And the price that was agreed to hire Charlie West is 150 US dollar per hour. And again, this is multiplied with the quantity that was planned and we come up with the planned cost. And here you also see the GL account um, this is posted to. Okay, that was the services. Now we look at the materials. For materials, and this is a material that we procure out of the project. So it's not a stock material, it is procured out of the, uh, out of the project. And what we see here, the system takes the purchase order price. So we have here planned one piece of that material. The GL account that is determined is this one here, material consumption. The price from the purchase order is this one here. So that is also then the planned cost. And last but not least, the expenses. 
And the expenses we set, we just take that what is maintained in the project. In the project I, I planned, I have travel expenses and I have expenses for or general travel expenses and I have expenses for meals and entertainment. And I entered these expenses and they are one-to-one -one taken over as planned costs. Last but not least, the last um, what we have not seen is inventory or stock material. So I have planned on this task, I have planned a material which is from the in inventory. And we see again, that is the material, but now the valuation method is the inventory costs. So the system looks what inventory cost is maintained for that business residence. And this one is the business residence that was determined. So with this, we see how we come up with an overall planned cost. We understand the valuation strategies the system takes to find the proper, the right planned costs. With this, I would like now to go and show you some reporting, cost reporting in the system. First, a report for the project manager. For this, I go to project management and I go to reporting. We have many reports and if this is overwhelming, you can define your priority reports, which I did. And I marked three of them as my priority reports. One I would like to look into is the project cost and revenues by project structure. So I go in here. And initially, and this was defined by um, everybody can design what is the entry. I want to see a graphic. I want to see the planned costs, the already incurred actual costs, the planned revenue, and the already invoiced revenue as a bar chart. But if you want to see it in a table form, you can easily switch here to a table or define other views. And in my case, I would like to see it now in a table. And I see here the project structure. So this is a report for a single project. So um, you can also have multi-project reports. What does this report show me? I see the overall planned costs for the project. I see the inception to date planned costs. So from what I planned from the beginning of the project to now, the project is not done yet. Overall, I planned this, but up to to date, that is my plan. I see the encumbrance amount the open purchase order amounts, I see the actual costs, what was already posted from actual time confirmations, supplier invoices, material consumptions. I see this and I see the variance here between the inception to date planned costs and the actual costs. So I see overall it looks pretty good. I'm below budget, 21%, but there are some exceptions. So for example, for the blueprint, I spent more than originally planned. So when I want to understand this a little better, I can drill in and I have another view here. So for example, I put in the product. So now if I go to the blueprint, I see, hmm, uh, it seems that something happened here on the, I have senior consulting and junior consultings where we have deviations, especially on senior consultancy. So to understand this better, I want to see which person was the difference. So I can easily go in and pull in additional information. So for example, I want to see now from which person, which time recordings triggered the deviations. So I can easily go in here and now pull in the employee. And now I see for each task, for each product, which employee was planned and what was the actual. So going down here, to the blueprint, I see that there is um, or a planned recording for Peter Sellers. Um, I planned him with costs for his service of 2,400. He's slightly above with 3,000. The big difference occurs from Tonya Gardner, who was not planned at all, but recorded 2,500 US dollar to that task. It is still okay because these unplanned time recordings always go through an approval. So the project manager 
accepted the time recordings, so that is valid. But here you see really where the deviations occur and come from. So that is one report I wanted to show you. Another report is the profit margin by contribution, contribution scheme. So for that, I switch. This profit margin um, is normally looked by a, someone in finance, a controller. So I go to the cost and revenue work center and go to the report list. Again, we see here we provide many, many reports that can give you insight into all aspects of finance and controlling. So, but I again have to find some priority reports and you see here there is the report I talked about, profit detail by contribution margin scheme. And I have to find some views here. So I go to the first view and execute the report. And what you see here now, um, and I group the report a little bit, we have different kind of projects. So we have the typical customer projects where we talked mostly about. And we see here multiple projects that we used. So for example, the project CPS06, which you have seen multiple times, but also a couple of others. And what you see here, that the revenues are posted, like I said at the beginning of this unit, as sales revenues. Any discount is posted as sales discount. Together, this is the net sales revenue. So the sales revenue minus the discount. Then you have costs of goods sold. How much did it cost you to um, perform and, um, and do provide this service? And so you have the costs of goods sold. So then you come up to the gross profit um, on the sales. So that is the sales minus the discount minus the cost of goods sold. And so this is then here the gross profit for this specific project. And you do have this information for all the projects. On, in contrary to that, we have here a research and development project, which is not really tied to sales. It's a generic um, research and development project. In this case, the consulting company was building an industry template, which can be used later, but it's not really tied to a specific sale. And so, because it's a research and development project, the costs that have been posted to that project are other operating costs or other expenses. And so this was now the drill down by project. If you want to see it for your entire company, you can take out the project and look at it overall from your company. And then you see over all the sales, the discounts you gave, the cost of goods sold overall. You see the costs for research and development here. And then at the bottom, you see your income from operations. So this really gives, shows you where in the contribution margin scheme the different types of projects are posted to. With this, I'm done with the demo and switch back to the presentation. Let me recap. I talked about the impact of the project types on finance and you have seen this also in the report. The, we talked about the financial value flow in business by design with regards to projects. And then we had a deep dive into the valuation strategies for internal and external services, as well as externally sourced materials and stock materials. At the end, we briefly looked into projects with profit-centered accounting. Thank you for watching unit one of week five. I hope to see you in the next unit again.